Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your Bibles, the King James, to 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 1. Uh, David is, well, it's a continuation of the series. David is basically running from King Saul because Saul's trying to kill him. I mean, after all, David killed Goliath. And uh, like they, some people say, no good deed goes unpunished. And David fled from Naoth and Ramah and came and said before Jonathan. Now, Jonathan was uh, Saul's son, and Jonathan and David were close friends. So he says to Jonathan, What have I done? What is mine iniquity? And what is my sin before thy father that he seeketh my life? You know, your dad's trying to kill me. What did I do? And he said unto him, God forbid, thou shalt not die. Behold, my father will do nothing, either great or small, but that he will show it me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. And David swore moreover and said, Thy father certainly knoweth that I have found grace in thine eyes. And he saith, Let not Jonathan know this, lest he be grieved. But truly, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is but a step between me and death. Then said Jonathan unto David, Whatsoever thy soul desireth, I will even do it for thee. You know, whatever you ask me to do, I'll no problem. That's the Bob translation. Five. And David said unto Jonathan, Behold, tomorrow is the new moon, and I should not fall fail to sit with the king at meat. You know. But let me go that I may hide myself in the field unto the third day at even. If thy father at all miss me, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me that he might run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, you know, angry, then be sure that evil is determined by him. Therefore, thou shalt deal kindly with thy servant, for thou hast brought thy servant into a covenant of the Lord with thee. Notwithstanding, if there be in me iniquity, stay me, slay me thyself. For why shouldest thou bring me to thy father? You know, if I'm evil, you kill me. And Jonathan said, Far be it from thee, for if I knew cert uh, knew certainly that evil were determined by my father to come upon thee, then would not I tell it thee? Then said David to Jonathan, Who shall tell me? Or what if thy father answer thee roughly? And Jonathan said unto David, Come, and let us go out into the field. And they went out, both of them, into the field. And Jonathan said unto David, O Lord God of Israel, when I have sounded my father about tomorrow any time, or the third day, and behold, if there be good toward David, then I will, and I will, and I then send not unto thee, and show it thee. The Lord do so, and much more to Jonathan. But if it please my father to do thee evil, then I will show it thee, and send thee away, that thou mayest go in peace, and the Lord be with thee, as he hath been with my father. And thou shalt not only, while yet I live, show me the kindness of the Lord, that I die not. But also thou shalt not cut off thy kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord hath cut off the enemies of David, every one from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. You know, Jonathan's making a covenant here, and he doesn't realize that he's going against his own father for trying to kill David. But not only that, David would keep this covenant later on when uh, Jonathan and his father, Saul, meet their fate in a battle. 
David will eventually uh, find Jonathan's children and show kindness unto them when he's king. So David kept his end of the bargain on this one. Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. And Jonathan caused David to swear again because he loved him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon, and thou shalt be missed, because thy seat will be empty. And when thou hast stayed three days, then thou shalt go down quickly and come to the place where thou didst hide thyself when the business was in hand, and shalt remain by the strone Ezel. Ezel. And I will shoot three arrows on the side thereof, as though I shot at a mark. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go, find out the arrows. If I expressly say to the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them, then come thou. For there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. But if I say thus unto the young man, Behold, the arrows are beyond thee, go thy way. For the Lord hath sent thee away. So Jonathan's going to yell one of these two things and that'll be the sign to david to come or to leave verse 23 and as touching the matter which thou and i have spoken of behold the lord be between thee and me forever so david hid himself in the field and when the new moon was come the king sat him down to eat meat and the king sat upon his seat as at other times, even upon his seat by the wall. And Jonathan rose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought, Something hath befallen him. He is not clean. Surely he is not clean. Uh, now that was like a ritual. Like if you touched a dead animal by mistake or something, you'd have to uh, clean yourself with water and stay away from everybody for a certain period of time i don't remember what it is but it's in the book of leviticus so saul didn't think nothing of it verse 27 and it came to pass on the morrow which was the second day of the month that david's place was empty and saul said unto jonathan his son wherefore cometh not the son of jesse to meet neither yesterday nor today and jonathan answered saul david earnestly asked leave of me to go to bethlehem and he said, Let me go, I pray thee, for our family hath a sacrifice in the city, and my brother, he hath commanded me to be there, and now, if I have found favor in thine eyes, let me get away, I pray thee, and see my brethren. Therefore he cometh not unto the king's table. Ah, then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan. Now remember, Saul had already thrown a javelin at David twice, at least twice. And try to kill him. Then Saul's anger was kindled against Jonathan, and he said unto him, Thou son of the perverse, perverse, rebellious woman. If I remember correctly, the um, Billy Goat Graham uh, Children's Living Bible translation doesn't say thou son of a perverse rebellious woman it says you son of a bitch i call it the son of a bitch bible yeah can you imagine a children's bible yeah uh little billy not billy goat graham but little billy comes to his mom and says mommy i'm reading the bible what's this word oh you son of a what yeah yeah billy goat graham approved you son of a bitch but in the king james it says thou son of the perverse rebellious woman do not i know that thou hast chosen the son of jesse to thine own confusion and unto the confusion of thy mother's nakedness verse 31 here's the real deal for as long as the son of jesse liveth upon the ground Thou shalt not be established, nor thy kingdom. 
You see, Saul knows that as long as King David lives, Jonathan will never be king. He knows this. So he's going to try to kill David. That's what you get for doing a favor for Saul. You know, killing Goliath. I mean, you know, why didn't uh, Saul send his son Jonathan to fight Goliath? He probably didn't want to, thinking, well, Jonathan might get killed. I don't want my son to die. For as long as the son of Jesse liveth upon the ground, oh, and Jesse is David's father, thou shalt not be established nor thy kingdom. Wherefore now send and fetch him unto me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him. Wow. So not only did Saul, King Saul, try to kill David twice with a javelin, he tried to kill his own son for protecting Saul, uh, King David from his father. Uh, no wonder the Lord rejected Saul for king. And Saul cast a javelin at him to smite him, whereby Jonathan knew that it was determined of his father to slay David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and did eat no meat the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had done him shame. And it came to pass in the morning that Jonathan went out into the field at the time appointed with David and a little lad with him. And he said unto the lad, Run, find out now the arrows which I shoot. And as the lad ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. And when the lad was come to the place of the arrow which Jonathan had shot, Jonathan cried after the lad and said, Is not the arrow beyond thee? You know, he's yelling this. And Jonathan cried after the lad, Make speed, haste, stay not. And Jonathan's lad gathered up the arrows and came to his master. But the lad knew not anything, only David, only Jonathan and David knew the matter. So Jonathan is yelling this secret code for David to know. Get out of Dodge, David, Dad. Daddy wants to kill you. Just like they'd made that covenant between them earlier. But the lad knew not anything. Only Jonathan and David knew the matter. And Jonathan gave his artillery unto the lad and said, said unto him, Go, carry them to the city. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept one with another until David exceeded. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, evil ones will try to tell you that they were a couple of Sato mites. I don't think so. You know, it's like the French. You know, have you ever seen the French? They kiss you on both sides of the cheeks. So David is showing extreme gratitude to Jonathan, bowing himself to the ground. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace for as much as we have sworn, both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between thy seed, between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. Oh, yeah. Then came David to Nob to Abimelech the priest, and I'm sorry, Ahimelech. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting of David and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And David said unto Ahimelech the priest, The king hath commanded me a business, and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. 
Now therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, and what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out, and the vessels of the young men are holy, and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Do you know that Jesus even uh, talks about this very thing in the New Testament? Oh, yeah. Well, we find that in Matthew chapter 12, verse 1. At the time Jesus went on the Sabbath through the corn, and his disciples were unhungered and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, oh yeah, those good old Pharisees always opposing everything, everything Jesus did. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he, Jesus, said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hungered, and they that were with him? How he entered, in, entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? That's right. The priests, uh, they work on the Sabbath day, you know, honoring the Lord. And yet they're blameless. Verse 6. But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. That's right. Christ is greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Oh, yeah. All right, back to 1 Samuel 21, verse 6. So the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the show bread that was taken from before the Lord to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite. Remember, the Edomites married uh, Esau, became Edom. Esau married a Hittite, Canaanite woman. The hybrid satanic sea line that nobody in your modern demonominational church world believes in anymore. Oh, yeah. And guess what? Um, according to Josephus, a Jewish historian said according to his records, King Herod was an Edomite. You know, the guy that killed all the children in Bethlehem under, what was it, two or three years old? Yeah. Can you imagine killing all the baby boys in a town because they wanted to kill Christ? Yeah, Herod. I don't think I'm going to be seeing Herod in the kingdom. No, I don't think so. Matter of fact, uh, remember, everybody, uh, you know, I get so sick of hearing people say, well, anybody can believe in Jesus and get saved. Uh, you know what? When Pilate sent Jesus to Herod, because he, he didn't want nothing to do with the trial of Jesus. So he tried to pawn him off on Herod when he heard he was from Galilee, because Herod was in charge of Galilee. And uh, when Jesus got before Herod, 
you know, Herod's expecting to see a magic show, you know, a bunch of miracles, magic tricks, right? But do you know the Bible says that Jesus answered him not a word? Why did Jesus not say, Herod, repent and believe on me, I'm the Messiah? Or turn from your wicked ways. Nope, he didn't say not one word to Herod. Nothing. So, and no doubt, Herod was very, very familiar with the miracles of Jesus. You know, let me tell you something. Uh, people in charge of government always send spies. I mean, I know I'm being spied on. I put up a video, okay, a video. It was unlisted private video. Nobody had seen it but me. I was uh, saving it for a certain time to uh, release it. Nobody saw this video. No one except for me. YouTube banned it. There was nobody to complain about this video. Nobody. Nobody had seen it but me. So how did they know to ban this video? He said it violated their standards and they deleted it. So, you know, they spy on you. Well, I'll guarantee you, Herod and the Romans had spies following Jesus around. You know, when you got 5,000 people hanging around you, they want to make sure you're not a rabble rouser trying to start a, you know, a revolution or something. So, here it is, Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. So, Saul's got this Edomite who is... Uh, tending his herds, his flocks. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here any thine hand, spear, or sword? I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slayest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, if thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. Now, if I remember correctly, Gath is uh, an area where the, um, uh, the giants, the Philistines, he's king of the Philistines. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did, not, uh, did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior before them, and feigned himself mad in their hands, and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down upon his beard. Then said Achish unto his servants, Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have ye brought him to me? Have I need of madmen? You know, do I need, do I need crazy people in my kingdom? Have I need of madmen that ye have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? You know, get this crazy guy out of here. I, you know, I don't want this guy here. No way and no, 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 no. All right, 1 Samuel chapter 22. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave Adullam, and when his brother and all his house, father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. 
I imagine David sent a messenger to his uh, family to let him know where he was at. Uh, verse 2, And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab. Now remember, the Moab, uh, Moab was an enemy of Israel. Uh, they were from um, Lot's daughters that got him, their dad, drunk and laid with him. And uh, I believe, the Bible doesn't tell you, but I believe their daughter, uh, their children probably married Canaanites that lived in the land. I don't know. You know, the Bible doesn't tell you who they married. And usually when the Bible doesn't tell you something, it's you, something bad, you know. So Moab and Ammon uh, probably married Canaanites. Of course, the uh, Bible teachers will... Uh, tell you, oh, well, you know, that's because Lot had incest incest with his daughters. No, he was drunk. He was passed out. He didn't know what was going on, evidently. So, at least that's, unless somebody can show me otherwise from the Bible. But uh, it's pretty rare getting pregnant from, um, well, I don't know, maybe it you know, I think it was one-time deal for each daughter, but uh, their children probably married Canaanites in the land. So, and then Ammon and Moab, uh, they were a cursed group. Uh, Deuteronomy 23.3, an Ammonite or Moabite shall not, shall not, not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. And of course, your uh, modern denominational churches will say, well, you know, they can't enter until the tenth generation, but in the eleventh generation they come in. Uh, they leave out that word forever at the end. Yeah. No. No. They're Canaanites. They had to have been. Polluted seed line. There's just entire groups of families that do not ever come to Christ. Or if they, well, they might start churches, but they're not Christians. All right, so, verse 3. 1 Samuel 22, verse 3. And David went thence to Mizpah of Moab, and he said unto the king of Moab, Let my father and my mother, I pray thee, come forth and be with you, till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. And the prophet Gad, oh, so there's a prophet named Gad, said unto David, Abide not in the hold, depart and get thee into the land of Judah, then David departed and came into the forest of Hareth. When Saul heard that David was discovered and the men that were with him, now Saul abode in Gibeah under a tree in Ramah, having his spear in his hand, and all his servants were standing about him. And Saul said unto his servants that stood about him, Hear now, ye Benjamites. See, Saul was of Benjamin. And David was of Judah. So he's telling his tribe, Hear now, ye Benjamites, will the son of Jesse give every one of you fields and vineyards and make you all captains of thousands and captains of hundreds, that all of you have conspired against me? And there is none that showeth me that my son hath made a league? He's made a, a promise, he's made a covenant, that my son hath made a league with that son of Jesse? And there is none of you that is sorry for me, or showeth unto me that my son hath stirred up my servant against me to lie in wait as at this day. Verse 9. Then answered Doeg the Edomite, 
Doeg the Edomite. Remember, he was there at the priests when the you know the when the priests were uh, giving David some bread and the sword of Goliath. Doeg was there, right? Then answered Doeg the Edomite, which was set over the servants of Saul, and said, "I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob, to Ahimelech the son of Ahitub, and he inquired of the Lord." For him and gave him victuals, you know, gave him food and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Hey, Saul, you know, the, the priest of the Lord uh, inquired of the Lord for him, gave him food and shelter and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Verse 11. Then the king sent to call Ahimelech, the priest. Now, the priest of the Lord. This guy is serving the Lord. He's a Levitical priest. He's God's servant. Then the Lord, uh, then the king sent to call Ahimelech, the priest, the son of Ahitub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and they came all of them to the king. And Saul said, Hear now, thou son of Ahitub. And he answered, here I am, my Lord. And Saul said unto him, Why have ye conspired against me, thou and the son of Jesse, and that thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait as at this day? Then Ahimelech answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all thy servants as David? which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house. Did I then begin to inquire of God for him? Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father, for thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. You know, what are you talking about? I don't know what you, what are you talking about? And the king said, Thou shalt surely die, Ahimelech, thou and all thy father's house. Wow! Can you believe this? King Saul is going to kill the priests, the whole family. Boy, I'll tell you what, his fate is sealed. It's bad enough he's trying to kill David, but now he's going to kill the priests that serve the Lord? You're going to kill the Lord's servants? Wow. And the king said unto the footmen, the soldiers, right, that stood about him, turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also is with David, and because they knew when he fled and did not show it to me. But the servants of the king would not put forth their hand to fall upon the priests of the Lord. They, uh, Saul's soldiers are like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to kill the Lord's priests uh -uh, I, I don't think so verse 18 and the king said to Doeg the Edomite and the king said to Doeg turn thou and fall upon the priests and Doeg the Edomite turned and he fell upon the priests and slew on that day four score and five persons that did wear a linen ephod 85 people Doeg the Edomite killed. And Nob, the city of the priests, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings, and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priests. Wow. And David said to Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. 
Boy, I'll tell you what. King Saul, keep digging that hole. You're getting closer and closer to hell every single day. Oh, yeah. All right. In the next... Uh, in the next lesson, we'll, uh, well, we'll be going to chapter 23, the next lesson. So, um, wow. All right, well, let's read 23. 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 1. Then they told David, saying, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kilah, and they robbed the threshing floors. So, well, no, let's let's end this. Let's end this. I'll do it next time. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.